right. I got it all under control. But thank you, really. I mean, I just, I'm, I'm thinking about your overhead. You know, why hire extra security if you have me around? What are you talking about, extra security? When the cop that was here earlier, I, mean, I didn't notice it myself because I was Excuse back me, in the office. Excuse me, may I talk to you for a minute, please? Uh, actually, we were um, kind of planning a party. So. No, really, it's quite all right. Take your time. I had an officer come by earlier to speak with you, but you weren't here. Um, well, how can I help you, Counselor? I'm looking for Mason Capwell. Have you seen him anywhere? Mason? Uh, actually, no, I heard he was um, laid up. I, I haven't seen him at all, no. Hi, I hope I'm not too late to help set up. Actually, no, everything's, everything's set. It's going real well. I'll tell you what, if I, if I hear anything about Mason, I'll give you a call. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. What about Mason? He's disappeared from the hospital. I know what you're thinking, and don't think it, because everything's fine. I mean, he was Mason. There's got to be an... In fact, I know what the reason is. What can I do? You could just keep your eye out for him and say a little prayer that he's okay. Hi. Please stick around, all right? TJ's kind of made me his project for the day. Well, you always say you, uh, you've handled worse. Yeah, well, if this is his idea of a come on, uh, it's the weirdest one I've ever gotten, then coming from me, that's something. Well, uh, if you'll pardon my saying so, you didn't exactly dress to avoid male attention. Well, I want to definitely avoid him. <laughs> well, whose male attention aren't you avoiding? You just might be so surprised. <laughs> Maybe I will. God. And I think it's even your size. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. See that? You thought I had no taste in clothes, right? Yeah. Who helped you pick it out? <laughs> Nobody. It's a sin to tell a lie. All right, Diane Bentley. But I picked it out. She just approved it. That's all. Wonderful, thoughtful man. True. And? <laughs> and I am so lucky to have you. And? And I am going to buy myself a really nice lavender sachet, and I'm going to hang it up with my dress and save it for our wedding rehearsal. Well, why, why don't you wear it tonight? Why? Should I? Well, that's the reason why I bought it. Honey, I want you to be the most spectacular woman there. I kind of thought that went without saying. Well, it does, but I'm... But I know. Celeste's just got a nice and expensive dress, and you don't want me to feel second fast, right? I didn't five minutes ago. Your eyelids are getting heavier. And heavier. And heavier. You can hardly stay awake. Hey, Mason, listen to what I'm saying to you. Come on! The only thing you can hear is my voice. And it's making you feel, uh, uh, calm and, and, and relaxed. You love yourself, the person that you really are. And, and you respect yourself. And when you hear me count to three, you'll wake up feeling refreshed. And very much yourself, Sunny Sprocket. One, two, three. Three! Three! You, you'll wake up and you'll be starving. You'll be absolutely famished. Sunny? Here. Here, eat up. Open up. Open up. What is that? Seaweed? What? No. It's your favorite food. Sonny, come on. You know you love this food. It, it's greens, collard greens, and fried chicken. He ate that cold for breakfast? Even more depraved than I thought. He's ten times the man you are. Well, why don't you rent yourself a football team? Gina, I can't take this anymore. I need medical attention. I've caught a cold in this basement. Well, then fine, let Sonny come back. What good would it do you, Gina? Just use your brain for a second. Even if you managed to marry Sonny Sprocket, he'd be committed and you'd be arrested before the rice hit the pavement. Please, Sonny. Sonny, please. I need you. Why? Do you think that marrying Sonny's going to help you get Brandon back? 
That's not going to do you any good. It's too late, Gina. Everybody knows about me. You can't walk into a courtroom with a psychotic husband and claim that you're model parents. It's not true. They don't have any proof. Sonny could pass any kind of psychological test they gave him. Sonny, please come back to me. Please, I need you. Come back. Maybe if I heat this up? Actually, a little bourbon on the side is the only heating up it needs, darling. Time and place to get into this. You always say that, Heather. When is? It's not like the subject hasn't come up before. Scott, I just, I don't want to ruin the party for tonight. What the hell with tonight? I just want to know where you get the idea that you're in a running competition with Celeste. From you and Celeste? Where else? How? What did I do? What did she Scott, do? you won't let me forget. Every time I look at you, I know what you're thinking. Oh, poor Heather, she's so insecure. I have to let her know that she means more to me than Celeste. That's what I resent. I'm just trying to show you how I feel. Scott, will you please not try so hard and just feel it? That's all I ask. I don't need these stagey, insincere gestures to let me know how I rank. Scott, I don't want to be loved in comparison. Heather, I don't do it to belittle you. I'm just trying to be considerate. Why? I'm not a basket case, Scott. You're treating me like I'm on the verge of breaking. Okay, okay, so if I do get a little jealous, I know it's stupid, I'll admit it, and I'll deal with it. It's not your problem, it's my problem. When you get drunk and stalk out of my high school reunion without a word, that's my problem, too. I wasn't planning on doing that tonight, if that's what you're worried about. No, of course it's not what I'm worried about. I just... I'm sorry. I don't mean to keep making things worse. I know, I know. You're just trying. And I'm trying to. I guess it's just kind of hard to face the fact that I'm a little vulnerable in those particular areas, which apparently I am. Scott, it's really, it's a, it's a beautiful dress. And I would, I would love to wear it. No, no, don't, don't. If you don't want to, it's all right. No, that's okay. I think I'm going to um, go home and start getting ready, okay? I love you, too. Am I getting the cold shoulder hint? No, I just think that you're not getting the hint. Well, I've made you angry. There's really no need for you to stay now. I hurt your feelings. And I'm sorry. Really? Well, if you're so sorry, you want to explain what that last remark meant? No, I don't really want to know. Never mind. Just that you are a person who doesn't normally try and please people, but there is now this one particular person. Um, that you're trying to please, and I, I, mean, I thought that, that it was pretty obvious. That's great. That's really nice. Well, That's you're wonderful. Not, Thank you're, you. You're not trying to hide it. What are you saying? I mean, who, who is this person you're talking about? What do you, what do you think? My ambition in life is to break up Heather and Scott. No, I didn't say that. Well, that's good because I would hate to have to call you a liar. Just, what is your point anyway, Michael? Well, just that you care what he thinks. That's all. What's wrong with that? I mean, he's an old friend of mine. There's nothing wrong with it. I understand that. Really, I do. You understand. What is exactly is it that you understand? That Scott is the one person right now who thinks of you the way you be were before all the things happened that you weren't too proud of. I mean, he thinks of you as the girl that was shy and bashful and pretty and full of promise. And you still are all those things, but you may think that those are canceled out for those of us that know the rest of the story. So, of course, you would want him to keep thinking of you as that Celeste. That's all. I really don't like being analyzed. Especially when it's correct. You know, it is that way for everyone. And we all have this picture of ourselves we want other people to get and bury the rest. And, uh... It's perfectly innocent, I think, as long as, well, you don't get too successful at it. Do you think that she went someplace? No. Breakfast was all made when I got up, and she packed me a big lunch of fried chicken and I think it was spinach. Do you think that she went with Mason? No. Why? 
I thought you and Mason were going to be boyfriend and girlfriend again. So did I. And so did he. It's just that your mother has a different idea. Like what? She better not. Must have been pretty icky having him around here, huh? He talks too loud and he drinks too much and his jokes are stupid. Yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm going to leave you my name and... Well, you know my name. I'm going to leave you my number, okay? So if you see or hear anything and you... you want to let me know... You want me to spy on my mom? I think you and I could do each other a big, big favor. Oh, I knew you'd come back. Oh, sugar plum. Dumpling, I'm much better at this with my two hands. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's just that... Well, I don't know if you've been paying any attention, but... Mason and Julie have been keeping me awfully busy. They've been turning my stomach on an hourly basis. I'm just a slobbering fool when it comes to you, darling. Here's that bourbon you asked for. Got it right here. Well, what am I supposed to do? Drink it with a straw? No. I'll hold it for you. <clears throat> What's the idea of bringing me down the cheap stuff? You know what I've missed more than anything, Sonny? What? You're singing. Really? Yeah, could you sing something for me? Like, uh, like Mama's. What do you say? Mama's don't let your babies grow up. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, I don't want to hear the chorus. I want to hear the verse. Lone star belt buckle, an old faded Levi's, and each night begins. Sonny! Mm. <laughs> it really is you. Just had to be sure. No, it's all right, darling. You did the right thing. Capwell's one slimy lizard. Yeah, this really is exciting because it kind of reminds me of that movie. You know, that one you rented with Roy Rogers in it? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it was called, uh, what was it? Uh, Warpath Women of the Pueblos, I think. I think that was it. That's it. Yeah, and, and, and Roy Rogers was in that cave, and he had all these chains on, and that Indian girl, she came and, and she un unlocked him. Well, and poor old him. Dale was pulling her hair out back at the ranch. Slime. There wasn't any such movie. You are slime, Mason. Damn it. Bless me, Father, for I've sinned. It has been, been many months since my last good confession. Why is that? I committed a sin that I was ashamed of, and when I did confess it, I know in my heart I wasn't truly sorry. But now you are. Yes, Father. Sin was adultery. You are married? I am a priest. I told the bishop. I see. Then you've done the right thing. I've tried. But I don't feel honest. You are here to do penance. You have resolved not to sin again. Yeah, but every day as I go through my duties, I... I'm presenting an image of virtue that I don't possess. Why? Because you don't confess your guilt to every bystander. What purpose would that serve? Father, are you able to say a perfect act of contrition? Yes. But, Father, when I leave, the lie is going to start all over again. What lie? If you fulfill the conditions of absolution... More and more, I don't feel like a priest. I feel like an imposter. I... That's the sin I can't bear to confess. I don't know if confession can absolve me of that. I don't know if anything can. Well, check all the hospitals in LA. Go as far as San Luis Obispo if you have to. And the police departments, too, yes. No publicity for now. I'll be here. No word on Mason? No, he'll probably stumble in here, as he's always been known to do. Well, I don't think he's in any shape to be stumbling anywhere right Well, now. I don't know who to call or who else to uh, try to contact. I don't either, Dad. Nobody does.
Safe then. I'll call Rosa. Ah, uh, wait a minute, Dad. I don't think I can. I, I got to stop by the lair some point tonight. Oh, that's right. It's your party. It's not my party. In fact, I don't think they know that I'm connected to that place. I just didn't think you want me to turn them down. No, no. By all means, let them have their victory celebration. They earned it. No, it's your victory, too, you know. That's an interesting remark. Why? You don't think I know how hard it must have been for you to admit that you and your company but fault for what happened to those men? You don't think that I am just as proud of you as they are of winning? Stick around. I need the company. And uh, when you go to the party later, uh, maybe you need some company too. If I wasn't. Me? I came to help Stephanie close up. Oh, yeah. Well, our 4.30 canceled, so she left. And so did Heather. But if I don't get done with this work, the case managers are going to have my head. You should be at home getting ready right now. Yeah, I will. I will. So, how's things going over at the lair? Okay. I hope. <laughs> Good. You know, I really appreciate all the work you've put into getting this thing off the ground. You know, if it was up to me, it would probably be a Christmas party. <laughs> That's what secretaries are for, right? Hey, wait a minute. You're not my secretary. You work here and so do I. I just thought it was part of the job, that's all. I didn't mean to step on anybody's toes. Who said you did? <clears throat> Alberta Street Clinic. Speaking. What? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm on my way. Uh, yeah, I know where it is. Thank you. Uh, you can lock up for me, right? Sure. Um, don't forget to turn the coffee pot off, and the people should be by to pick up the lab samples by 5 o'clock. They're usually late, oh, though. Yeah, all right. Okay, I'll be here. Is, is everything all right? Yeah, I just, um, I may not be able to come tonight. What are you talking about? After all the work you've put in, why? It's just my father. What, is he okay? Driving under the influence. That's Oh, do you have bail money? Yeah. I think I still owe you about 40 bucks from his legal defense fund when we were in high school. <laughs> I'm sorry, Celeste. Don't be sorry, Scotty. <laughs> it's just, it's the only time I ever hear from him. It's kind of the DiNapoli way of staying in touch, you know? Have fun tonight, okay? I'll see ya. Last name DiNapoli, D-I capital N-A-P-O-L-I. First name Frank or possibly Francis. What about him? What's the bail? I know it's not his first offense. You're too late. His daughter just posted his bond. No, I'm his daughter. You just called me like five minutes ago. You're not his only daughter. He's up right on the first try. If I don't have heart failure, I think we'll be over. Why I can't believe it's you. Yeah. Only the bra size has changed. Yeah, you look ancient. You look beautiful. And you. Thought you were Princess Di for a minute. I was on my way to this dinner thing for work, and I... What are you doing here? Just spending some of my hard-earned money, that's all. Yeah, I... I mean, what are you doing in Santa Barbara? I could ask you the same question. You know me. <laughs> Don't bet the farm on it. I know I was in a real hurry to get out of this place, but L.A. just, uh, wasn't what I thought it would be. No, I'm a... sorry I didn't stay in, stay in touch. It's okay. It's okay. We all have our own lives we have to think about. Actually, L.A. is where we're heading at the moment. We... Is Emily with you? Uh, uh, yeah. She's back at the motel. Oh, so you're not staying at the house? Three guesses. A cop, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, it's funny. He didn't tell us you were back. So I guess you really haven't been spending a lot of time there either. 
No. So what's in Los Angeles? Just checking out the job situation. I don't know, I just thought maybe the grass might be greener if there is any grass left in Los Angeles. Had a few possibilities up in Oakland, but Emily wanted to go south and she always gets her way. <sighs> the little brat. I'm dying to see her. How about if I follow you back to the motel? Well, Celeste, how about tomorrow? Okay, we're both pretty tired. Um, you have a phone number? Maybe we can call you. Come on, Lisa. We haven't seen each other for a long time. That's right. So another day is not gonna hurt. Lisa, now Pop's saying he won't go home unless one of us stays with him. Emily, turn around and see who's here. Oh, my God. You're not a baby anymore. Oh. I feel like I'm dreaming. Me, too. You are so beautiful. God, isn't she, Lisa? What I expect, you're a model. Oh, um, nine to five job now. I'm working. You're so beautiful. I knew you'd come back. I knew you'd find us. Nothing. I gather you haven't had any better luck? Maybe Mason isn't as strong as he thought. Well, uh, what do you mean by that? I mean, maybe he isn't Mason. And we may never find him. Yes, he is, and yes, we will. Yes, we will. Look, uh, we were just about to sit down for some dinner. Why don't you stick around, okay? Thanks a lot. I, I have to pick up Samantha. She's been at the babysitter all day. And don't decline to my account. I'm not. But you would if you didn't have another reason, would you? Maybe. <laughs> Probably. Julie, maybe it's time we mended some fences. What do you think? Just like that? Well, why not? We both want the same thing, don't we? Mason's happiness. Uh, a life as a responsible adult? There's a lot of things I want. Probably more than I'm entitled to. And yes, Mason is one of them. But when you and I think about happiness, seems like miles apart. Except we do agree on the major things, don't we? You think you're right for him. I think you're right for him. Thank you. That means a lot to me to hear you say that. <laughs> I, I, listen, I'm going to uh, do what I can to look for him. I'll let you know you, you do the same for me. And I'm running, I'm running up dry here because I'm running out of ideas. And whoever has him obviously doesn't want us to find him. Or maybe he doesn't want us to find him himself. Given my history of misjudging Mason, I'm putting myself on a limb here. But that's not the assumption I'm working on. Did Augusta find out anything from Gina? Augusta? Why would she? She doesn't want to have anything to do with either one of them. I wondered. I thought I saw a car when I drove by last night. Guess not. Brandon. What happened to you? Shh. Where's your mother? I saw her come out of the cellar and go upstairs. So I... Are you still hurt? Well, yeah, but I think I'll be all right. If you could just get the key, it's over there on that table. Wait a minute. What did you do? You must have done something. Why? Is this how she punishes you? No. But if Mom brought you here... Wait, I better go ask Mom. No, 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 Brendan. Brendan, don't do that. That won't work. Now, look, Brandon, I know I haven't exactly been your favorite person lately, and I'll explain all that later when I have time, but do you know how I am when I drink too much and I sing real loud and everybody calls me Sonny? Yeah. No wonder Mom wanted to keep you and your stereo down here. Brandon, you know I was never like that before. But your mother wants me to be like that all the time. Like we say at school, just say no. Well, I did. I am, but your mother won't let me out of here until I say yes. But why? Look. I know she's your mother, but I need a favor. Just go tell Julia. Would you do that for me? Just tell Julia where I am. What was that whispering I heard? I was talking to the rats. 
You're the only rat down here. I'm saying my prayers. Do you mind? Oh, is that your new personality? Father Mason? I'm the only personality in this basement, Gina, and that includes you. Well, we'll just have to see about that. Oh, not that again. Pull out my fingernails or something instead. What's that? My secret weapon. No. Not that, Gina. Gina, no. Come on, Sonny. Come on back. Your little dumpling's waiting for you. Your pumpkin's waiting for you to come back. She misses you so much. I know how strong you are. How much confidence you have in yourself. You're such a human. But your little cowgirl wants her cowboy back. Sonny, speak. Speak to me, Sonny. Speak. God, I like my face. You bimbo, did you really think that would work? You think I'm like an AM, FM radio? You just switch to either one and I'll sing any tune you please? You know what? You'd be a whole lot better off if you were, Sonny. I'm going to tell you why. Who do you think wants you as Mason? Huh? Julia, maybe? Huh. She's trampier than I could ever hope to be. Your kids? They don't even remember who you are. Chip lives with Cruz and Eden. Samantha doesn't even know what you look like anymore. And your doting father doesn't care whether you live or die. Shut up, Gina. Really gets to you, doesn't it? That father of yours got to both of you, actually. Only you turned to mush as soon as he said anything less than insulting to you, whereas Sonny was able to stand up to him. What, did you think your father had a split personality, too, at the wedding when he told you all that crap, all that sentimental stuff? Shut up, Gina. It's worse than the damn radio. Well, I wouldn't believe it, because I know exactly what he was doing, and you should do. He's doing what he's always done. He's tricking you. He just wanted you back. He doesn't care whether you wear a fig leaf or a cowboy outfit. He wanted you back because he wanted his $5 million back. That's what he wanted. <laughs> oh, he's going to get a reaction now. Michael, hi. Well, when we dress to kill or uh, stun or whatever the expression is. Get off my back or I'll mess up your hair. <laughs> Where's Scott? Uh, Scott's working late. He called me at home and told me to meet him here. I haven't seen Celeste here yet either. Have you? What? Uh, no comment. All I did was ask whether or not Celeste was here. Yeah, she isn't. That's true. What, do you think that I'm such a wreck that I have the scenario in my head of the two of them sneaking off to the back of the clinic together? Well, I don't know what's in the back of the clinic. Michael, this is the most sexist thing. I cannot believe all the assumptions everyone is making about me. What? Okay, so Scott had another girlfriend once. That means I'm supposed to be jealous? Is that it? What? I mean, never mind what I really feel. Well, what are you really feeling? Get it, Michael. Well, what I think is that if you are jealous, then you've got some reason to be, and to be if uh, you were jealous, you'd never admit it to yourself anyway. What do you mean, reason to be? Well, Celeste likes to be liked. And if you want to misinterpret that, there's certainly room Michael, for you. Michael, this is a stupid conversation. Excuse me. Hey. <laughs> what is Lisa feeding you? I can't believe how tall you are. I'm fat, aren't I? Oh, stop it. I mean, if you weren't my own sister, I wouldn't even sit next to you. So uh, who's the old dog over there with the hot young chick? Yeah, I'm <laughs> full of it still. Oh, it's true. I just can't get over how much you've changed. What do you expect? It's been how many years? I couldn't send you my class pictures because you never had an address. I know, I know. I'm, I'm sorry. It, I'm sorry. Okay. And I got your birthday cards and things. Of course, the last two or three must have blown off the porch. I ain't gonna be really honest with you, Emily. I was having a pretty rotten time of my life. I mean, I know it was my own fault and everything, but I just couldn't talk about it without feeling sorry for myself. So, I just didn't talk about it at all. I've had a time like that too. The past couple of years. Why, baby? What, what happened? Mm, nothing, really. I mean, Lisa works a lot. She's always tired. <laughs> I haven't had that many friends. What? I can't believe that. Well, I spend a lot of time alone. 
I like to. <laughs> I mean, if I'm going to be a writer, I have to write, don't I? Oh, you're still on that kick, huh? Oh, I know I haven't experienced anything yet, but when I do, I want to be ready. Oh, my little Emily Dickinson. There is no frigate like a book. Don't right. start that. <laughs> Gosh, after seven years, you'd think you'd forget. Oh, and you're counting. I like this. There are kids in the second grade now who weren't even born when you left. Thank you very much for pointing that out. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> you I have lost the knack, and I don't want it back. Excuse me? Apparently, my father is going to be sleeping it off here, so when he wakes up, just let him go home. Or you can call me at this number, and I'll come pick him up. Miss, this isn't a hotel. You picked him up. He's your problem. Lisa, we can't leave Pop here. Watch me. All right, honey, he's going to be fine. It won't be the first time, and I am simply not going to move in and play nurse for him tonight or any other night. Unless, of course, Celeste wants to move in with him. Lisa's right. He'll be all right. Wait well, up. I'm coming back to check in on him. All right, fine. We'll come back later. I really don't see any point in you guys staying in a motel. Why don't you come and stay with me? I mean, it's not any palace or anything. Can we? Oh, that's real sweet, Celeste. But I know how I would feel if relatives that I hadn't seen in God knows how long just showed up on my doorstep. Hey, you're not just relatives. You're my sisters. And I'm inviting you. And I'm also inviting you to come to a party with me tonight. Uh, well, I don't think we have anything to wear. You look great. You look fine. You're beautiful. Oh, come on. There's going to be a lot of people that you know they're from our old neighborhood. Will there be food there, and will the Dillons be there? That's what I want to know. Yes to the food, no to the Dillons. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what a mom used to call them, the Mongol whore. <laughs> That's right. Augusta! Damn it, where are you? You can run, but you can't hide. Hi. Hi. Would you like to come in? No, thanks. Brandon, do you have something you want to tell me? I know where Mason is. This is great. Yeah, it is. And you deserve all the credit. Oh, yeah, right. Look, my idea of a party would be a lot of popcorn and some malt liquor. <laughs> it's only because of you that there's something to celebrate. Michael's right. You kept pressing this case. You linked the cancer cluster to the oil rigs, and nobody here thought you'd get anywhere with it. Including me, I'm not too proud to say. Well, it was for purely selfish reasons, I have to admit. I don't know how else I would have dealt with losing my father. But I am glad that it helped a lot of other people. I mean, most of these people didn't even have rent last month. Now they're all millionaires. <laughs> so are you. You keep forgetting it. Yeah, I guess I do. Here's Celeste. Yeah, I guess she finally made it. 